Driven from their homes by armed invaders, a few hardy refugees faced the prospect of starting again. They would found a new village deep in the countryside. With a new settlement established, the first priority was locating a reliable food source. The simplest source was gathering from nature. With a healthy supply of food, the village could start to grow. To do so, it would need more hands to share the work. the new workforce yeah, yeah. could now turn to the Cheer growing villagers' yeah, needs. First, they would build a mill near their food source, so villagers could drop off gathered berries more easily. Next, the growing yeah. village would need wood to build with. The growing community now had a steady supply of lumber. To make wood collection easier, villagers could erect a lumber camp near the forest. Thanks to the camp, villagers no longer needed to travel as far to drop off lumber. The village now required additional houses to support its growing population. With additional housing in place, even more villagers could join the workforce. But a populous village would soon exhaust the natural food sources. To grow, 
the community needed dedicated farms. Woodsmen and farmers now kept the village well supplied. Further growth required knowing the countryside and finding more resources. For that, communities employed scouts. Able to move quickly and see great distances, scouts were key to discovering new resources. The most important thing for a scout to locate was a ready source of gold. To prevent having to haul all large distances, expanding communities would establish a mining camp near the source of gold. A well-placed camp ensured efficient gold mining. With a good supply of gold, the village was becoming a large town. The signpost of this growth would be the construction of a large landmark. With the landmark in place, the once sleepy village announced itself as a thriving feudal township. The townsfolk had been driven from their homes before, however. This time, they would defend themselves. The first step would be constructing a barracks for infantry. Once it had a barracks, the town could establish a standing force of soldiers. Simple infantrymen armed with spears were a common choice for these militias. Each 
Okay, on your Sally. Cheers. Your way on your Sammy and Dee. Yes, sir. Meet your worker. The town now had a militia and could look to reclaim the lands lost to invasion. The invaders had blocked the road north with a stout palisade. Although spears were of little use against these walls, the militia could burn down the obstacle with torches. What Each era, each will read up. Go, go. On the best road open, the militia could now reclaim their lands in the north. First, the spearmen had to deal with a lone sentry. Advancing aggressively, the militia eliminated the enemy sentry. The invaders had a small cavalry camp guarding the road, but the militia was ready to attack. were highly effective against cavalry, allowing the militia to win the day. All that remained was to destroy the invaders' stables. The invaders' cavalry post was destroyed, but other enemy positions awaited further up the road. Hostile archers defended the next camp, which would put spearmen at a disadvantage. The township needed cavalry of its own to deal with this, and so would need to build stables. To deploy that cavalry quickly, the town needed to build their stables near the front lines.
Fortunately, friendly villagers came out of hiding and joined the effort. Stables in place, the town could field horsemen of its own. Churlas, their fende has them. Each timbre fails. Yeah, the autumn. Forward, ridente. Each one. Yeah. And you work, huh? That's really they are what they say. Eat your work. In Hester. Bayard May. What sort of face, eh? Sorry, they do. Each team presents. A yore at Yard, a pastor, no. Then Hester. Garu Mooper. A skitter, Garu we got. Ikeom, yes, Garu. Fedder. Yeah, Yaru. Bayard May. Are you right as Yahweh? The town now had a rapid light cavalry, skilled at harassing slower targets, such as archers. and moved on to destroying the archery range itself. The invaders' archers in their camp were destroyed. A final enemy emplacement remained, one fortified with palisades and defended by spearmen. To deal with this target, the town would need longbowmen. First, they needed to build archery ranges in the area regained from the invaders. Once more, friendly villagers arrived to help. Here at Opper, that Shule Bayo Tinban. You did it, Uma. You sadly had to Uma. Here was the Uma's honor. With several archery ranges in place, the town could add longbowmen to its forces. Yes, sir. West 
through Harlow. Meet your worker. And your worker. And your worker. Strail Bruze. Each timbre theos. Strail Bruze. And your worker. Each bruke that. That shoe lay bayo timbran. Trimmer, gun. Strail bore and gun. Bury your worker. Flamboga and odd. Flamboga and odd. Yarrow the work. A strong force of archers could eliminate enemy spearmen at a distance, so long as they took the proper position. on a cliff top, the longbowman would be protected from an infantry charge. Last of the invaders fell to the resurgent homegrown population. Now that their lands were free of enemies, the town could take the next step in its growth and become a powerful medieval city. Here too, the erection of a great landmark would be the signpost of this growth. What third faith, eh? Where a few lowly refugees had founded a small village, now rose a mighty city. From there would grow an empire. Thank <laughs> you.